It's just another way of God working through nature to tell us how the universe operates. Right? So it's that. <clears throat> what is the theological description? What is the aim of theological description? Again, to know the world of God's mind. We want to know who he is, right? We want to understand as much as possible why certain things happen. Why did Jesus Christ, Christ came on earth to die for our sins? It's, a, it's an understanding of that. But then, here is the difference. Relate and serve. The basis of Christianity is to the community, to relate to one another. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. So it's primarily a relationship. God wants us in our personal lives to relate to one another. And what is unfortunately does not happen often is that so as soon as Christianity is used to control, you destroy it. Understand? What did Christ say? He walked up, he washed the feet of the disciples. And he said, the disciple is not any greater than the master. Christ came to serve, not to rule. He will come as a ruler eventually. But the essence of Christianity is community, and it is to serve one another. Unfortunately, we don't do enough of that. Just to tell you, there's a brethren church there, there's a brotherhood church here, there's a Nazarene church here. Well, they all interpret differently. But are we ready to serve one another? Wash each other's feet. Use commonality. Okay, that's the difference. So one is control, the other one is relate. They both are needed. You need to control nature. Correct? And you need to serve one another. You see the, the, the two sides of the same reality. Now, let's look, be more specific. Science cannot answer the question, who am I? Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? That is theology. That's, that's where faith comes. On the other side, science deals with objects. You know, I'm telling this so you can see the differences and the similarities, so you can appreciate both. Here we go. Science is primarily inquiry. You always ask questions. Why is this happening? How is this happening? In Christianity, it's primarily commitment. You commit to truth. Both, each of them have an element of each, but the emphasis of Christianity is commitment. The emphasis of science is equity. Science deals primarily with mechanisms, okay? Whereas scripture and Christian faith deals with meaning. Primarily. Okay. The next one is relationship to things, relationship to persons. See the difference and the similarity. One speaks of evolution, the other speaks of creation. If, a, if there was no Bible, there was no revelation, scientists, as I learned from the atheists, you look at it, how did things come from bacteria to today? Well, one way to do it is use Darwin's evolutionary theory. Okay? That is a mechanism that science develops. But we know more through scripture and there's creation. God created things. He may have used evolutionary processes. He may not have. He may have done it in six nanoseconds, not six days. God's luck is very important. So the emphasis of, 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 so don't be afraid of evolution. That's how a scientist who does not who does not believe in God will have to explain existence. And so he's going to use the evolutionary process. 
Sometimes it works, and microevolution happens all the time in the laboratory. So evolution has truth in it, especially in the micro level. It's a macro problem. When it's big, <coughs> then you have issues. But that's science. Whereas we emphasize creation, God created everything. And he sustains everything. See the two sides. Then you look, science talks about body and brain, the faith emphasizes soul and mind. These are not opposed to each other. When someone says, we will understand how the brain works, you shouldn't be afraid of it. It is one of our efforts. There are trillion exons, there are uh, neurons, trillion neurons, exons, and the whole thing, you know, and my son, for example, got his degree in, uh, in uh, brain science. We want to find out how the brain works. That's mechanism. But it doesn't say anything about what is mind and soul. Now here is the faith aspect comes of the same picture. So don't be afraid when the scientist says we're going to understand how the brain functions. Eventually, we come close to it, maybe. But you can never eliminate soul and mind because that's above the purview of science. Okay, next is temporal versus eternal. Scientific method deals with time primarily. Whereas our faith, Christian faith, emphasizes the eternal. There is beyond today. Okay? Then science emphasizes the physical. Faith emphasizes the spiritual. Emphasis here is the secular. Okay? The other one is sacred. Now, the important thing is, these are two sides, two aspects, but there is only one reality. That's it, for God combines these two. He combines the scientific method and nature and scientific method. God combines his revelation through scripture. So there's one reality, but it has two aspects. The way I usually try to explain this is, let's see if I can do that. If you take a coin, draw me a book of it. It's like a coin that has two sides. It's one coin, but it has two sides. Two aspects. One reality. If you look at science and faith along these lines, all of a sudden the differences become less. You don't have to attack one or the other. You can put them together because we need both. Both aspects we need in our lives. God's two books. Two aspects, one reality. Now, one thing I should add down here is science, this is also important. Science continuously raises philosophical questions that go beyond the competence and the purview of science. Ask it, sir. It raises questions. Science has a circle with its boundaries. Faith has a circle with its boundaries, right? They do overlap some, but science cannot talk about, science cannot be used to prove or disprove God. That's beyond its purview, and no scientist has the right to do I asked my atheist friends, you don't believe in God? How do you know there is no God? Well, science proves it. Science proves nothing when it comes to God. It's very key. Okay? Science, if the scientist has to limit his understanding to the observation, testing, and so on. Whereas Christianity asks philosophical, theological questions. Who am I? Where am I going? What is the end of life? Is there anything beyond life? See, these are legitimate questions. Even the scientists ask. Anyone who tries to, it's usually the younger people, when I was at Princeton doing my graduate work, the proudest people who said science will do everything were the young chahal, chahal scientists. <laughs> the Nobel laureates, one of them especially, who was one of my advisors, they're much deeper. They say, well, we really don't know what reality is. We have to be careful in not going beyond what science tells us. The sex doctor is very, very important. It's very fundamental. Scientists need some humility. They think they have everything. You know? We also, evangelicals, we need some humility that science is wrong, you know, that does, evolution is bad, and so on. That's not the approach. The approach is to look both aspects and realize that God is the creator of both. Someday we'll know everything. 
right now we don't. You know, it's like Apostle Paul says, we look at it in, in a glass darkly. And the we, 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 someday we'll know as he has known us. So when people say, how did this happen? How did that happen? Sometimes I come to a point, I say, God did it, but how? We really don't know. Did it take six days to create? Or did it take six million, million years to create? Only in heaven we will really know the answer. But if you're open-minded and you look at the limitations of both, the need for both, then you realize that, hey, you can really learn you can really enjoy science and not be afraid of it. You can really enjoy and not be afraid of scriptures. This is why we wrote this book. It says, Wonders in Our World, Insights from God's Two Books. In like Iran's language, in reality, there are three books. God has three books, right? One is nature. One is uh, uh, scriptures. You know what the third book is? You and I. Apostle Paul says, you are our letter. <clears throat> For me, I don't, I reach that point, I don't debate with the atheists. I want them to see who I am. If they see in me honesty and love and care for them, I'm willing to listen to them. Things change. So keep that in mind also. It's a personal level. Again. What will you see the book again? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can send the I can, I can send this if you're interested in getting it. It's on Amazon, but it's black and white. If you want the color version, I have to send it to you. But this one, which is much more detailed analysis of this, is on Amazon and it's $6.95. If you're interested, I, I'm not here to sell books, okay? That's not the purpose. The purpose is to make them realize what a wonderful creator we have, who has given us the beauty of nature, the incredible mind he has given us. Even Christ says, you are God, I this check. Psalm 80, it says that. We have the mind of God and we can create and create and create and enjoy. We shouldn't even be afraid if someone says there is life on another planet. God can create life on any planet he wants to. So, if we look humbly and realistically, then you'll find out that this is just an elementary way of saying it. One last, okay, let me, I think I have another one to show you and I'll end with that. Can okay, have some questions? Yeah, look at this cartoon, I love this. This was published in Science. Here's a guy who is doing his thesis. He writes the equations and then comes to the point and says, ah, then a miracle occurs and he solves the problem. And his professor says, hey, wait a minute, you have to be more careful here. You're mixing two things, you're mixing apples and oranges. You're not... You don't wait for a miracle to happen to solve. Sure, God can give you an insight to solve a problem. But you don't insert God in the equation. It has no place. This is science. Okay. Am I making sense like this? That's like a sentence. These are elementary points, and that's where you start. Each has its domain. They do intersect because God created both. But if there are questions and problems, eventually we will resolve some of them. In others, we will never resolve until we're in his presence. Yet I need that man. I'm not sure yet in Casa Zeke said, but for all hearts of yours, but as far as we need, but I guess you need. Okay? Now, one last point. One last point. It is interesting that we approach reality not from scientific proofs or Bible or theology. We approach with a worldview. All of us are born or develop a worldview. Either you say, I believe in God, or you say there is no God, and your actions then depend on your worldview. This is where I bring my atheist friends. I say, wait a minute, let's not talk science. What is your worldview? You see the point? Once you start with the worldview, the, the way you interpret Bible and nature becomes very different. And there are three major worldviews. The first one is Judeo Christian worldview, one God, Christ, and so on. Or you don't believe in Christ, but God and scriptures. Then there is the ontological naturalist. You know what that is? Atheist. If, if someone says, I don't believe in God, you want to impress them, say, oh, you are an ontological naturalist. 
they love it, public chicken nuggets. <laughs> Most of the time they don't know what. Ontology naturalism is what there's only nature. There is nothing beyond nature. That's ontological naturalism. And communism, all art are part of that. Nihilism is. <laughs> then there is the pantheism. You know what the pantheism is? Everything is gone. That's the Eastern way of looking at things. Those are the three major worldviews. And that's where things start. That once you pick that, then you can explain to the person, hey, your worldview is this, this is my worldview, that's your worldview, let's see which of these is more satisfactory, and that's where you start. Okay, I've spoken a lot, enough, I just want to leave it here, I don't want to dump everything on you, it's not easy to do that. The other thing is people were wondering about my tie. If you notice, I have a tick in my eye, a, a, a facial spasm. I wanted you not to look at my eye, but look at my eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a few minutes for questions. Yeah. If you want, there's no question that is bad. There are answers that are bad. <laughs> what do you call other religions? Under what? That's it. Well, Islam, there's the one God which is called, in other words, Jew. Jewish, Christian, and Islam are in the one God category. The atheists are existentialists, nihilists, communists, okay? That's another category. Hindu, Buddhism, and that category goes on with pantheism. Rough divisions. And then there's pagan. That's a fourth one. Some people are pagans. They believe in many gods. And they worship this, uh, this God everywhere. Yeah. Uh, anything you can share with us? Uh regarding your interactions in that society, something that interesting happened? With, with the atheist society. society, yeah. Yeah, it is a very difficult society because they have made up their mind there is no God. It's easier to talk to skeptics, agnostics, because they're searching. Most, and interestingly enough, I was shocked how many evangelicals have become atheists. Their background, you know, and then you dig into it find out that they had some terrible experiences in the church or in the home. And they they throw the baby with the bath. Yeah. yeah, you throw the baby with the bath. Why throw the whole thing off when something bad has happened into your life? Okay. Yeah. So as I say, it is, it is tough to deal with atheists who are committed atheists. Some of them don't care. Some of them have thought through and become atheists. Most of them hate God. That's very interesting. I tell them, why do you hate God if you don't believe in him? <laughs> it, it's it's all. But they do. Why a lot of them, not only they think, but they don't want to, they, they kind of attack you or right. they, like, they want you not to believe. Yeah, those are called. They don't want to believe, but they don't want to believe. In Armenia, we used to call them Mardan Cho, Anastasia In other words, it is, there are. There's a lot of activity going, it's called militant atheism. That was the Soviet Union. I remember, uh, I think I mentioned it in my last year, Charlie Cruz, when I was at Yerevan State University as a professor, next door to me was scientific atheism, uh, Ambulgar. So I went to talk to the leader, I said, if, if uh, uh, science, scientific atheism, communism and science are atheistic, I can tell the students that Christianity has a scientific basis also. You know what he said? He said, no, 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 so, the Soviet Union, we have one propaganda, atheism. Three years later, this was 1986, three years later, Soviet Union collapsed. I went back. He called me, he called me, he says, I want to talk to him. I went there and his table was the Bible open. He said, why are you doing that? He says, look, here are the Ten Commandments. We taught lies to all our students at Yerevan State University, and I regret it. I want you to get up and talk to them about Christianity. A time comes when they will have to face reality. Yeah. Question. <laughs> Oh, more humble. Oh, that's Barbalina, you said. <laughs> what should we do to be more humble and loving? <laughs> Follow Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says, for the sake of 
Jesus Christ, I gave up everything. What did our Lord say? I'm washing your feet and I'm your master. How much more you should be able to. It is a difficult thing. Oh, intellectually. Well, that's hard. Intellectually. Intellectual. I'm an intellectual Christian, not a hard Christian. More intellectual than hard Christian. And that is, that brings pride automatically. Oh, I graduated from Princeton. Big deal. Who cares for Princeton? God doesn't care for Princeton. What are you doing to your brothers and sisters? How are you helping them? You, you see, it's a battle you're going to have. Intellectual Christians move one direction. Hard Christians go around, speak tongues, and shout. And that's the other extreme. Somehow we have to have the heart. Start with it and go to heart. And I, I pray to God. I said, Lord, give me a heart for my friends and my people so I can love them. Because I know that intellectually I accept everything. But in reality, I fall short. Yeah. Thank you. Very good question. It's a personal question. Well, I need to kind of stop here because you and I will have to go. And I thank you. Rahim, what would you